things I focus on is helping people to get back to a place of hope. Hope. The morning show worth talking about. Faith at Work with Yvette Gavin. Hello and welcome to Faith at Work. I am your host, Yvette Gavin. As a woman of faith, have you ever felt alone and uncertain in your work environment? Yeah, I sure did when I started growing in my faith. I can recall a time when I was having lunch with one of the vice presidents at my company. I was an IT director at that time, and I was, I was being considered for a more senior role. And as a woman of faith, I always bow my head and bless my food before eating, whether it was breakfast, lunch, dinner, but sitting there with this vice president, I just wasn't sure how it would be perceived, you know, from a professional standpoint. Has any, anything similar ever happened to you where you found yourself wavering between expressing your faith and maintaining a professional image? Guys, Luke 9:26 came to mind as I quickly decided what I should do right there at that lunch table. Now, Luke 9:26 says, "Whatever or whomever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his glory, and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels." I chose to be me at that moment, a woman of faith who blesses her food in public and privately. And I bow my head and I said a quick blessing or prayer. The vice president looked at me and then she asked, do you always bless your food in public? She went on and confessed that it's something she should do for herself. And we spent a considerable amount of time sharing about the challenges we both have faced living out our faith in the marketplace. That, guys, was the moment the idea of helping women of faith in the workplace was birthed within me. Along with another coworker at that company, I started a Christian networking group where I led a monthly Bible study at the office, get this, over lunch. Today, my heart is still focused on empowering women spiritually and professionally. It's leadership handbag time. This is a segment that I bring you each week tips and tools that you can apply to your career right now. Today, ladies, the resource I have for you is one of my own books, Recalibrate, Navigating the Job Market with Confidence. I wrote this book with you in mind, The Woman of Faith. In it, I share key principles on how the Holy Spirit taught me invaluable lessons on how to increase my income and how to increase my influence in corporate America. It is a quick read, and I know it will inspire you to trust God the more with your career. And this book is the perfect gift for someone in your life who you know could use some career inspiration and real world tools for growth. That's not all I have for you today. We're turning the tables here at Faith at Work because today I am not the interviewer. I'm the interviewee. My long-term friend and television host and public relations consultant, Bunny Winfrey, will be interviewing me. <laughs> Join me after this quick break to learn more about the heart and the mind behind Faith at Work. COVID-19 has changed the way leaders engage teams, and it has caused teammates to shift how they communicate. Effective communication is more important today than ever to a team's growth and overall success. The John Maxwell Leadership Game, implemented by Yvette Gavin Consulting, can help you lead your team into more effective leadership and communication practices. Schedule your workshop today. Call us at 424-262-2462 or email us at yvette at yvettegavin.com. The perfect way to start your day. 
family, traffic, meetings, traffic, family, all can be stressors in our everyday lives. But spending a few minutes with God can prepare you to take on the world. The Faith at Work devotional is a perfect vehicle to do just that by helping you center on what's most important, your relationship with God. And now, for your donation of any amount, you'll receive a copy of the Faith at Work devotional. Just visit our website at www.faithatwork.tv. Welcome back, everyone. I am now here in, stu in the studio with my good friend, Bunny Winfrey. As I said to you earlier, she is like amazing when it comes to communication. Not only is she a producer, an author, she runs a solid communication business, public relation firm, and I am delighted today to be that person where I am the one being interviewed. So we are turning the tables, as we said earlier, and I am today the interviewee and not the interviewer. So with that, I am turning this segment over to Bonnie Winfrey. Hi, Bonnie. Uh, hi, Yvette. It is such a pleasure to be with you on Faith at Work. Thank you. Thank and you so much. And I just want to say to your audience that I am just thrilled to be on the show today with Thank you. you because, you know, we've been friends for over 30 years. Yes. And, you know, you're the best when it comes to a trainer, a speaker, um, you're a coach. Um, you're just fantastic in every area. You're going to find out more about that as we talk through the show. But first of all, what I want to say is congratulations. Thank you. On completing your last season. Yeah. Wow. That must be certainly a thrill for you. Honestly, it is. And it went by so fast. I mean, 22 episodes. I feel as if we just started. And we have. We just started. That is amazing. Why did you name the show Faith at Work? Oh, wow. Excellent question. For me, it was something that God birthed in my spirit. One morning, I was just, you know, meditating. And I kept hearing Faith at Work. And there were two things I feel that God was showing me. One is that the faith itself, you have to apply some level of work with it in order to see results. But then I began to see, as I was working in corporate America, the lack of faith demonstrated at work. I had church friends and, you know, and members where they would come to church and they would talk about faith. But then when I would see them sometime in the workplace, the, the behavior and the character that was displayed there didn't really match up with the behavior and the character I would see on Sundays. And so this whole thing about faith at work is really, um, it's, a, it's a twist on words, right? Because I'm really talking about the workplace, but I'm also talking about faith that you need to put to work in order to have success. That's amazing. That's amazing. I am just so thankful that you have this show for the world to see. Tell me what takes place in the planning process on a day to day basis to make this faith at work work. Well, it's definitely work and it definitely requires faith, to be honest, because, as you know, I'm still running a full time business, Yvette Gavin Consulting. And I look at the work that we're doing with Faith at Work, the television broadcast as a, lab a labor of love. And so the work that goes in, of course, it takes um, more than a person to do a television broadcast. And I'll just start with this awesome crew that I have here with me today. <laughs> I mean, without this crew, I couldn't do this work. Honestly, I could not. So That's you definitely amazing. need the right people on your team to produce a show. And, you mm -hmm. know, I feel very blessed that not only do I have a great crew, but, you know, the executive producer happened to be my man, y'all, <laughs> my <laughs> husband. <laughs> and so I'm delighted to be doing this work um, alongside him as well. And then I would say there's a lot of work that goes into just actually preparing for the show. You know, you have mm -hmm. to line up guests. Um, you, you know, you have to get a script written. It means a lot. You know, for me, I have to be concerned about wardrobe because, you know, ladies, y'all been calling and writing and, ooh, you shining and your hair this. So we have to make sure everything comes together, even from the set design. It all, you know, this is all work. But I would say the foundation of all of that, and that's what it takes to do every television broadcast. But for me, I add on that component of my faith. So how I choose what guests to invite, what topics we're going to have, 
I listen to the Holy Spirit to guide me. As I am going through my morning time with the Lord, I'm listening to hear what he's saying need to be said, need to be covered. I'm listening to what he's telling me. There's a gap here in this topic and I'm bringing those type things, you know, to this broadcast. That's awesome. Thank so you. spiritually, you know, me knowing you, Yvette, yeah. um, tell me about your, your time with the Lord in praying for this show, you know? Because yes. I, I, I know there's got to be some devotions and, and things like that that have prepared you to um, launch such a fantastic show. So for me, it is, I have become one with how I live spiritually. And so I, it's, I do these things every single day that I barely even think about them because for me, it is um, as transparent as drinking water or breathing air. So I start every day, whether I am you know, home or whether I'm, I'm vacationing, I started every day in the presence of the Lord. You know, even before I put my feet on the floor, getting out of my bed, I say good morning to God. I'll do like a little stretch in the bed and then I'll just start speaking to him and I'll stay there because I want to hear his voice before I even move out of the bed. And I typically move on down, you know, move to the kitchen and I start that brew of coffee. And, um, you know, I still love drinking coffee. And then I come on down to my prayer room. And, um, you know, in the lower love of our home, we have a prayer room. And I start, you know, my day there. I'm breaking that fast, if you will, from overnight sleep. And, and I want to hear what God has to say. I want to hear his voice first thing. And I start off usually not so much praying. I start off just meditating. I just sit still. Uh, I've recently started using a guided meditation. And so I'm loving that now. It's something my prayer partner sent me and I'm loving it. And then I'll typically, typically go into some type of reading. I have a daily devotional that I use. I'm, I use different ones. Right now I'm using one that was published by Joyce Myers. But, you know, I've used others and I listen to that message and then I wait for God to minister that message to me that's in that daily devotional. I'm also using Faith at Work, <laughs> the, uh, Leadership day, Daily Devotional, since it is a weekly one. You know, I make sure I go to, because you know, here's how I want everybody else to use it. I don't want them to just read through it. I want them to meditate through it. So I do segments of it each day as well even though you know, I'm part of that, that body of work. And then I often will end with affirmations and then some type of praise. You know, I, I, just, you know, I just can't leave without praising God. And I typically do that just out of my own spirit versus listening to a worship song or anything like that. I allow the Holy Spirit to bring out of me what worship is that he wants for that day from, from, my, from my vessel, from me. And that's typically it. I love to cover my sponsors in prayer, I cover my guests in prayer because I don't take it lightly that when we extend the invitation that people say yes. And then I wanna make sure I'm bringing my best each day. And so I, I pray for the covering of all of that and I ask that God bless each and every person that is connected to this ministry, this TV production. That's amazing, okay. Yvette. And I, I just wanna back up on one thing you okay. said the book, Faith at Work. Yeah. I just want to tell everyone that um, I had a struggle in my life where I was challenged with something uh, health-wise. And a good friend of mine told me that um, Satan was using that to keep me from my purpose. So yeah. Yvette sent me her book, Faith at Work, and I'm encouraging all of you to read this fantastic book. And this book pushed me to Praise purpose. God. So Yvette, I want thank to personally you. thank you for taking the time to put this book together. But it's more than the book, you know, it's the broadcast. It's all the guests that you bring to us, Yvette, in this show. Mm -hmm. And like you said, I know you said that, you know, you've prayed for the different people to come forward. Um, you're a fantastic storyteller. Oh, thank you. And you've you. brought great <laughs> stories to us all to just yeah. strengthen our lives and again, I just want to thank you for that. What have you been challenged with over the years? What would you say is your biggest challenge? Oh, wow. Actually, to be honest, I have more than one. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I understand. You know, I, I, I felt over time, one of my challenges was sometimes I felt I've, I've given too much. And you know, some people would say, well, you can never give too much, but indeed you can. 
Because if we look at scripture, there are times where what Jesus actually said, you know, don't go and tell anyone, you know, he had people to actually pull back. And so I've had to learn how to do that. That has been a challenge for me all mm -hmm. of my life, even as a teenager. You know, if I see someone needing help in any form or fashion, and if I feel as if I can help them even just a little bit, I'm usually running to go do it. But sometimes God mm -hmm. do want us to pull back and he needs to minister directly to that person or help that person resolve that issue and they see only him in that. But you know, so I've had, I had that challenge. I think the most recent uh, challenge and, and it's recent would be four years now, was finally um, saying yes to my calling. It took me years to leave corporate America, honestly, to do what I'm doing right now. And I'll be real, it was the money. I'm like, I ain't gonna lie. I can say though, <laughs> I love those jobs and I love all those people and right. the work environments, which I did enjoy working with a lot of them and many of them are friends today that I've met at work. But the truth be told, it was like, who hold up, I can leave this. <laughs> and it was the income. <laughs> But I kept, you know, we talked about dreams and pursuing your dreams on the show, but I kept having that pull, no matter how much more money I made, no matter how big the title became, I would still find myself at a place months, months down the road with that tug on my heart that I wasn't being fully obedient. And I had an incident at a dentist's office of all places, and I think I share this story in Faith at Work, the, um, the devotional, where the, I had to have a tooth you know, removed. And the dentist, I've, he's excellent. He's been my dentist for years. And uh, he's good at what he does. But I hear him panic, and he's a very gentle man. And I hear him tell his staff assistant, hurry up, hurry up. And I'm like, oh my gosh, he, he, he's never like that. And then he says to me, he said, Yvette, I'm having a hard time extracting this tooth. And he said, I'm concerned that, you know, the medication that was numbing me was, was wearing off. And he said, I gotta get this out because I can't give you any more. He had given me two, and, um, and, and two shots already. Oh, and wow. I panicked because I don't want to feel that pain. <laughs> I didn't want to feel that pain. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I said a prayer to God. And as I was sitting there, I was like I was preparing for death because just in flashes, my life was going by. And in my heart, I was saying, I'm okay. I, I've, I've done, I saw my husband and I, and I remember thinking, I've been the best wife I can be to him. And I'm gonna try not to get emotional, that just touched me. And I saw my son and I was like, I've been the best mother. And so in a way, I was saying, I, I felt like I was saying, if this is the end for me, I'm at peace because I've lived the best life. But then I heard it, I heard it. It was like it was someone right there, that dentist chair. And I'm gonna get you for making me cry later, Bunny. Oh, this job. <laughs> you made me cry too. <laughs> but I heard a voice and it was like it was in the room and the voice said, but you haven't done what I told you to do. Oh my God. And I Hold remember that just thought, saying that fast. Hold that thought because we have to go to a commercial break oh, wow. <laughs> and there's so much more that you, Faith at Work, have to learn about Yvette awesome. Gavin. We'll be right back. As I walk through the cemetery today, I see the loved ones that have passed on. Our families are leaving here in record numbers. And as they are leaving, I'm wondering, are they leaving us a legacy? Our Bible tells us to write the vision and make it plain. So I have a question for you today. Do you have a will? Executive presence has nothing to do with skill and talent. Executive presence is a measure of image. Thank you for joining us on Faith at Work. I'm here talking with the extraordinary person, Yvette Gavin. Um, 
Yvette, take us back to the dentist chair. Finish what you were talking about what happened because that's an extraordinary story. You talk about being challenged and here you are thinking that this could possibly be something that could change the course of your life. Continue telling us what happened. Well, you know, as I was saying, Bunny, I heard, you know, this voice saying, but you haven't done what I told you to do. And I, I just said a pr quick prayer and I said, God, I promise if you allow him to take this tooth out now before I can feel any pain, I will do what you told me to do. And wow. just as I finished that prayer, my dentist said, got it. And it, it was done. <laughs> And then tears just started rolling down my eyes and my dentist put his hand on my shoulder to comfort me and he said, Yvette, it's okay, I, the tooth is out. And I'm looking up at him and I'm like, I'm not crying about this tooth. I'm crying because I'm like, I don't know what I just committed to, to God. And now I gotta go figure this out and do this thing. And for me, it didn't take long to figure it out because once I you know, was back home and I'm back you know, meditating and praying, mm -hmm. It was very clear to me, and that's what the Lord told me. You already know. I mean, my call, my purpose is to teach, to inspire and encourage others. And, you know, working my corporate jobs, you know, I had some great times and it did allow us to live a certain lifestyle, but I wasn't teaching the way God had called me to teach. And there were pockets of time where I was able to empower and inspire coworkers. And I do feel that there was a season for that, but I got real comfortable real comfortable with the income. I'm gonna just keep it real. And you know, I confess I've moved on from that. From that. And so I finally had to say, I trust God. And so I love a very lucrative <laughs> income. And I started Yvette Gavin Consulting, which is a training, a motivational type training that I do. We focus on leadership and I'm coaching others in their careers and their spiritual lives. I'm still helping couples. You know, my husband and I had a couples ministry some years back and, you know, now I'm still working and doing one-on-one -on -one work with, you know, many couples as I am still doing all the other things. And God showed me back in the nineties that one day I would be hosting a television show. And I used to talk about it when I was doing a, a morning prayer breakfast we called Sisterhood back in the day. And I would tell the sisters there one day, you know, I will be hosting a television show because God had given me that vision. But here's the thing, I lost sight of it because I was focusing on the wrong thing and God brought me back. And that's one thing I want everybody to understand. As you build a relationship and grow spiritually, Whatever that that we may have, you know, steered away from, if it's God's will for our lives, he will direct us back to that. And, you know, I've heard some people say, you know, a detour sometime, it may look like a detour, mm -hmm, but it's really mm -hmm. not. It's a divine uh, direction because you're learning something in that space. And now I can look back and I'm like, I'm able to run a business because of all the things I did pick up and learn in corporate. You know, I'm four years into this business I, and I'm amazed myself with the love of clients I've been able to, you know, to gain. And I, without my corporate connections and, and the things I learned in corporate, you know, I ran a, a large organization, manage a huge, you know, budget. I've taken all that and I brought it into, you know, my learning, you know, my business. So I, I know it was somewhat of a detour, but I do believe even that was divinely you know, built for me. And the other thing, Yvette, is you are you champion people to purpose. Yeah. I want to go back a little bit because I know that um, one of the things that you've done, you know, in your corporation right now and even previously before then, there were people that would come to you and say, well, I want a promotion yeah. and I'm not sure uh, about how to go about it you would direct them. There were people that come to you and they would say, I want to make X amount of dollars. And you would say, that's all you want to make. <laughs> yes. And then what you would do would you would just put uh, the right knowledge in them, the right words for asking for what they want. And you built the confidence within the people. Can you tell us about some of those stories about people that you've helped? Yeah, and that's just natural for me. I mean, sh it's sharing what I have and part of and that's why I was saying, you know, I'm a big giver and I give in many ways, but sharing knowledge is a, a way of giving as well. 
And so mm -hmm. I'll just share this one story about, you know, a young lady that I know. She had been working for the same company for about 10 years. And I love telling her story because it's so phenomenal, right? You know, we typically will get pay increases of about, you know, on the average from 12 to 18 percent of where we currently mm -hmm. are. But, you know, this young lady actually like three times her salary. She was making like 70. And then after I started working with her, coaching mm -hmm. her, she landed her dream job. And when I say dream job, it was the actual work that she wanted to do at her ideal company where she wanted to be employed. And they paid her $172,000. And it That's was just amazing. amazing. It totally yes. changed the course of her That's life. Amazing. Honestly, it did. And I'm, I'm grateful to be able to be a part of that. And I've helped many others. Now, I, never anyone who three times their salaries almost, but definitely mm -hmm. doubled their salaries and expanded their vision and began to see the value that they were bringing to an organization. That's amazing, Yvette. And again, I just want to thank you for just faith at work in general. I know you receive a lot of feedback from people. And tell me about the success of the show. What are you hearing from your audience? Thank you. That's an excellent question, too, because we're here for that purpose. So I'm hearing people tell me things like, I'll, I'll give you one example. On one show, we had a person who was sharing her story about how she had a job that she didn't really want. And in, in the job that she wanted, she later did get, but she had to actually apply her faith and some courage in that and go to the employer and just introduce herself. And so I've had someone to write in and said they were so inspired by that because they identified with that situation and that gave them the courage to go and do the same. And so that day that I got the email, I don't know the actual full outcome, but the sheer mm -hmm. fact that she realized, oh, I've been praying for this job. She understood, but I haven't been doing anything in the natural to put that work to this faith. And once she saw that broadcast, she went and applied work to her faith. I mean, I was like, amazing. Lord, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I've been watching Faith at Work. I saw Faith in Work with all the things that you've created as far as like with your job situations, just in general. Faith and Work there. You have lived Faith and Work out. Thank you for teaching us and loving us to the point of showing us what faith is all about and how we can take it to the workplace. Thank you, Yvette. It's just been a privilege to talk with you. Oh, thank you so much. And I knew you were the right person for this. It's been a pleasure. Can't say thank you enough, honey. And um, to our viewing audience, I just want to say thank you for joining us today. And to remember that faith without, without works, works is, is dead. dead. Thank you for joining us. Yes. Thank you.